LG came all guns blazing with the Optimus G back in November, and to resounding success, they had developed a top tier device paralleling the best Android devices, and in a sleeker design that finally puts them in the higher end spotlight. Sitting pretty at the top of benchmarks for some time, the Optimus G is about to get trounced by the 2013 lineup of Samsung and HTC devices, and this is when they choose to release it in Australia. Let's see if it can still hold strong in the face of some stiff competition. For Aussies, the Optimus G is leading the charge for LG's L Series 2 and F Series launches and keeps to its simple design choices but spruces them up to what we come to expect of a high-end device. The design is broken up into two equal parts, the gorgeous, elegant and timeless front and the flawed attempt at a unique rear panel. Natural transitions and interpretations of LG's mid-range devices has been executed very effectively. The deep black Gorilla Glass 2 front panel attractively masks three capacitive buttons under this sleek front. The corners are subtly rounded and the sides feature a vertical drop off that is initiated with a very classy laser cut edge bordered by a thin band of metal. This gives a stark contrast to the plastic sides that while protective and buffering, cheapens what would have otherwise have been an expensive feel. The attempt was made to do something original and that comes with the flat glass panel at the rear that reflects through patterns at different angles and this interprets the textured backs of the L series devices but with a touch of class. However, it is covered quickly in fingerprints. The camera on this model protrudes with a square shape that is very pedestrian but this is to accommodate the 13 megapixel camera. I will forgive them for that. What I wish they didn't do was round the plastic sides into this flat panel. If they merely mirrored the front panel design, the G would have been intensely classy and sharp. But in use, the design is comfortable and natural and fits nicer in hand than other handsets with this size display. The base of the phone sees the two screws for securing the back panel and the micro USB charging port. Yes, it is a unibody design. The top of the right hand side comfortably holds the unlock button with the headphone jack at the top of the device and the volume rocker on the left hand side. The micro SIM card tray is embedded lower down the left hand side, but not an expandable memory slot in this model. The notification light is thankfully included as with other Android devices and sits next to the front facing camera. The phone is convincingly thin and compact, no creaking or bending and definitely alluring, holding only 145 grams of weight. The attributes most talked about leading to the Optimus G's launch was its impressive spec sheet. Not only is it reflective of a top tier device, but it gave a performance that top benchmarks and delivered a proficient experience. This I will agree with, I can't bludgeon its performance like I did with some of LG's other devices. It was efficient in general use, fluid with moderate multitasking and faultless under intense strain. This is thanks to the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro 1.5GHz quad core processor and 2 gigs of RAM. The Adreno 320 GPU provided an excellent gaming platform and was truly an enjoyable experience coupled with an excellent display and ergonomic fit. 32 gigs of internal storage is included with NFC Bluetooth and a 2100 mAh battery. As stated, the device does not allow expandable memory and it also doesn't allow USB hosting or mounting. In daily use with the Optimus G running at full ball, I would wake up and go to bed with charge to spare. With CPU optimization enabled, I never saw a huge improvement in battery life nor a deficit in CPU performance. Of continuous HD video playback at full brightness, it would last no longer than 5 hours. Call quality was good and reception was excellent, finding strong signals in a lot of circumstances. One thing that the Optimus G has to do is defend itself against the 2013 onslaught of 1080p displays. Its 4.7 inch True HD IPS Plus LCD panel with 1280 by 768 pixels offers up a brilliantly bright and accurate representation of colours and pure whites. Blacks suffer somewhat and the quality deteriorates when viewing from a modest angle, but I was still intensely impressed. 318 ppi is still very good and yes individual pixels are noticeable on close inspection but it wouldn't be any reason not to buy this device. One thing that did happen is the Optimus G would automatically decrease the screen brightness when the phone heated up to a point and wouldn't allow you to turn the brightness back up until it cooled. On the software front LG overlaid the third iteration of its Optimus UI a top Android Jelly Bean 4.1. It's a stark contrast to the clean Nexus 4 operating system but comes with some neat additions and thorough customizations. 
Theme and application icon selections is adjustable, but most attempts are childish and boring. Swiping in from the lock screen, I chose the smooth dewdrop transition that enters the UI with a bubble effect and gives customizable swipe in applications. This can be brought back to a very plain and ordinary transition, but then loses the applications for whatever reason. Five home screens are given out of the box, but these can be expanded to a maximum of seven and can be viewed with a host of transitions and choice of scrolling through circularly. You can also gesture outwards to remove the home screens to view the background image by itself, which I see no benefit of besides the fact that LG just could. This seems kind of true with a few of the included apps and features in the Optimus G. All in all, I'm very pleased to have them all, but some seem lacking in one way or another and would benefit from more iteration or innovation in the device's abilities. So many of these features seemed done before with TouchWiz, in particular gestures and eye tracking, which also seemed more detailed in Samsung devices. The notebook application is functional and can achieve document creation with some hand drawing customization, but without a stylus, I didn't find it as user friendly as S Note. Quick Translator, Video Editor, and Video Wiz are great applications, and the alarm offers the ability to set a puzzle lock to stop me merely snoozing the alarm over and over again. Quick Memo is back and handily, again, it allows me to take screenshots and quickly draw atop them. Allowing it to overlay a note over another app can be really handy as well. The key feature this time around is QSlide. Accessible from the notification tab, these apps are pop-up applications that can be altered in the transparency to overlay with normal phone functions or app use and free up diving in and out of running applications. Two can be open on top of the OS and they are resizable. The issue is I don't find them very usable when large. Obscuring the view of applications when using them is a nuisance and when the transparency is activated in the QSlide applications you can no longer use them until the application is made opaque again. So in effect you're still popping in and out. There is definite benefits and use particularly in watching videos but it isn't as effective as pure dual side by side application use. I also found it a major hassle to change display orientation as the QSlide apps would not resize appropriately and the keyboard would obscure the apps when in use. Oh, and I almost forgot my favorite feature. You can change the settings to allow the device to be used in landscape, including the home pages. This isn't a new feature, but one that I think all Android devices should have with displays that near five inches. It makes perfect sense and is very user friendly with the extra display real estate these days. Media playback is superb on the Optimus G. Videos came across beautifully and bolstered by neat software additions with live zooming into videos and the QSlide abilities and also Miracast technology that allows compatible TVs or TVs with a Miracast dongle to share the display to either mirror what is happening on the device or play a movie and still use the phone as normal. Audio in the Optimus G was clear, but I did notice some videos often were lacking in overall loudness. The premium earphones that came as well were good but far from great. Using the Dolby Mobile sound enhancement improved the quality of bass but was still poor compared to iPhone's earbuds. The internet browser performed accurately and displayed information smoothly but wasn't as quick as some others on JavaScript tests but did boot web pages as quick as the Galaxy S3. Now while 13 megapixels seems to be the flavour of the month, the G's optics were a mixed bag. Close-up images that were manually focused look sharp and detailed, landscape shots would look vibrant but occasionally lack sharpness and struggled with high dynamic range producing flaring. The software was well featured with four manually adjusted exposures with a maximum manual ISO of 400 and plenty of presets to choose from. It features a voice activated shutter as well as being able to use the volume rocker as the dedicated shutter button. The menu at the top of the phone can be altered to presets that you most use and a key one is time catch which takes a sequence of photos in short succession to choose the best one. Panoramic photos worked excellently however HDR settings seem to come across with a shadow like grain unseen in some other devices. In video mode you can apply silly faces and backgrounds that can be a little hit and miss in terms of working and quite gimmicky and fun for only about 5 minutes. It really seems like optics were the lesser in the Optimus G, enough to keep people satisfied without blowing their minds. The extra abundance of pixels crammed onto the sensor immediately increases noise in lower lighting situations, but night shots coupled with a flash came across good. Unfortunately the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera in particular took very soft shots. 
but you can check out all these photos and videos at the Kaboo Tech Facebook page by hitting the link in the description below. LG ticked a lot of boxes with the Optimus G. They got in the spotlight with a phone that performed at a very high level with extremely generous software features and customizations. The design is timeless and classy, and then at the same time dated and rehashed. It fits with the rest of their collection, but with a small amount of tweaking and refinement and maybe a risk here and there, future iterations of the G should come through quite elegant. They unfortunately seem to just be keeping up with the Joneses with the OS overlay, which moves them along with the competition, but never really standing themselves apart. In terms of buying this over the likes of the Galaxy S3 or HTC One X Plus, I could definitely see that happening. There isn't a valid argument not to really. In terms of buying it over the HTC One or Galaxy S4 or even the Xperia Z, I probably wouldn't. And this is where Australia needed the Optimus G back in November to give us a taste of what LG can do before we get smothered by the pack. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Kurt from Kabootech. Thanks for watching.